How is audio now? Now we have audio. Hey man, you're thin. Alright, I'm trying to play with this new OBS. I think, um... I think the problem was with my stream key, possibly. But it's a long story. Um, so we have, we have audio, we have video. Man, I'm thin. Okay, we have audio, we have the video. I'm gonna start here. We're a little bit late. If everything is good. Um, I think the camera's too big. I, I've got to edit the screen, but um, I've got a problem with using this. I've never used this OBS before, so or like once. But um, it's kind of weird. All right, let me move this this stuff. It's too big. I don't know how the board is going to look. Let me just bring up a board. I want to see how bored, how bored the big is. How bored the big is, if we bring up a board, and we're going to check how it looks here. All right. That looks pretty good. All right, guys. I think we lost a lot of our, of our regular viewers, but... We will we'll do a simul, I think, for 20 players. Keep it a little simpler since we're a little bit late. I think we've got everything running and it looks okay. Won't have time to play tonight, unfortunately. It says Soul to Ego. Soul to Go. All right. I'm just bringing up this board to check the sizing on the camera and stuff. That looks all right for the time being. All right, let's go to create a simul. We're gonna be running a little bit late today, <coughs> um, but that's cool. All right, host new simul. Better late than never. We've got standard 40-40. We have 20 seconds extra, 20 seconds, 20 minutes extra for me. Um, sorry guys that I've been off for Wednesday and Friday and now this disaster today because everything was kind of messed up. I think maybe they they might have changed my stream key, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's a problem with my old OBS or the stream key. But that was the problem today. All right, how does this look? We can make the camera a bit bigger I said I'm thin I did lose a little bit of weight um, over the last couple of months though not like in the last week um, all right I think the problem was either my stream key or the version of OBS that I was using and I'm not really certain which one because it started working on the new on the new OBS but I'm not sure if that was the actual solution or re-entering the stream key. I'm not certain. All right, we're gonna start. I'm gonna do a simul for 20 players. I think rather than 25 today because we lost some people and it's a little bit late and I wanna keep it under control. So if you'd like to play, we're gonna play a 40-40 simul here. All right, create simul. I'm going to take 20 players rather than 25. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry this week uh, was a disaster, basically, because my phone couldn't send me text messages from Hungary. I had to register a new phone with Twitch, and that's why I couldn't stream Wednesday and Friday, because I was waiting for them to approve the new phone, um, which is my, like, what does that mean? Accept random candidate. Um, okay, I yes there. Rub a dub lub. Guys, we're starting a little bit late. Francoma, I don't know. Um, it might have been the stream key. It might have been the other OBS. I've got an old OBS I've been using for a long time. Um, 
I've had this OBS um, that I'm using now on the machine for a while, but I had never actually like used it for a stream. Guys, we're gonna take 20 players. I don't care as long as you've got like 50 rated games, as long as it's not provisional. Um, sometimes I win too. Not very often, usually my games are draws. Uh, super late here, Twitch Internet Chess. Yeah, I'm sorry about the lateness. We, um, But it's better late than never, right? Sometimes I win, sometimes I draw. I have like a huge draw rate lately. It's getting out of control. It's been getting out of control for a while. Um, but not here on, on Lee Chess, just in tournament games. Something like 16 out of my last 20 tournament games were draws. Um, anyway. Baloom. Okay, guys. We are streaming live. I mean, if you're entering this simul, and you don't know that, you're in for a surprise. All right. Hopefully, the stream will look okay. I've never, I never used this version of OBS. It looks pretty clean. Um... The setup is a little different than my than my usual my usual OBS, so it might be a little bit differently formatted. Brundle Philly, what's up? We um we moved over from Europe last week, and I'm streaming at a totally different time from what I usually do. But this is the way it's going to be for July and August. Simul every Sunday, normally starting at 5 p.m. We had some technical problems here. Um, we're going to be doing a stream tomorrow, Wednesday and Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. For those of you who, who work a normal job, like to get off work early. If you have an excuse, tell your boss that you just want to watch some chess, play some chess on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. I'm sure they'll be glad to give you an hour off work. All right. We don't have too many players because everybody thought I wasn't going to stream today, but then I got it to work at the last possible minute. Um, when I'm, when I decide I'm I'm gonna do something, I do it. Got my easiest classical victory last game. Dude, I'm in the top ten classical players on, on Lee Chess. That's like the first time, I've been in the top ten. Feels good. It's not that important though. Obviously, um, I got there by default. I think some people just like their ratings expired or something. Oh no. All right. Mouse is doing weird stuff. All right, a lot of lower rated players today. We don't have a lot of our regulars. They all gave up on me because um, we usually have a lot of expert strength players rated between 2,000 and 2,200. Uh, but everybody thought I wasn't going to get the stream up. I can always join, play my usual unsound opening, resign in 25 moves. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. I was at the beach today. I've got sunburn on my right arm. You guys want to... Can't really see it. It's on, it's on the inside. But um, interesting stuff, huh? Fran Coma. I'm not sure I could play. It's already 4 a.m. in Russia. Yeah, man, that's pretty late. I hope you don't have. I hope you don't have to do anything tomorrow. Um, all right. I got a. I got a spam message from Alexander Rachmanov today. Looks like this Grandmaster, actually, I like him a lot. He's a fantastic player, but he was sending, like, spam messages to everybody. And his account got, like, deleted or something. Speaking of Russia. Rachmanov. He's like a one-square Karpov, Karpovian player. Excellent player. But don't do the spamming, man. I don't care how good you are. Ominous Monkey, what's up? Soltigo. No toleration. <laughs> no toleration. Is toleration a word? Tolerance for spamming here on the chess. Fotar, 1676. Guys, just be aware before we start that this simul of games could technically last three hours. So if you're going to like quit after 15 minutes, just don't play, okay? Noob Training, I think we might have played once before. Was Noob Training the player that I played before? Yes, we played. Actually, Noob Training, did he? He's guilty. No, he's playing Zug Addict now. Okay, I'm looking at that. Franco 2000. That's you, Francoma. He decided to play. I'm going to take three more players. 
No 960, no me. Oh, you're so stubborn. Troll and roll, just pretend it's chess 960. Just the pieces. It is chess 960. See, that's the problem. Troll and roll, it is chess 960. Um, all right, I'm just going to... We've got a lot of lower-rated players today, so I'm just going to take, like, 22, 23. All right. Gunter Central Perk. Uh-oh, Akhmad with the 2100. He's bringing the 2100. I thought it was going to be an easy simul, but Franco joined and Akhmad is in with 2100. So we got a guy down here had snuck in from Brazil. Pirayu in action. We have a Brazilian friend who has had a couple of accounts. I wonder if it's, this can't be Gary Topalov. It's not you, is it, Gary? Just another Brazilian master. Lots of good players. We're gonna we're gonna start it up here. Last call, guys. If anybody wants to start, um, originally it was supposed to be a twenty-five player simul. Um, all right, we're gonna start. It is chess nine sixty. It's an official chess nine sixty position. So don't give me that. There's no excuses. Wubba lubba dub dub. I know a lot of my regulars are gonna be pissed off that um that this happened, but I did the best I could. Uh, we had we had a technical problem with starting the simul due to my ineptitude. I hope you all forgive me. Um, Franco2000, he's one of the highest rated players here. Let's keep it serious though. I really need a mouse pad. I'm not playing on my mobile phone like some of you. Um, do you mind if players watch the show? Of course not. That's like one of the most fun aspects of it. I mean, there is a delay. I also do streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday during the winter months I'm doing it five days a week but we're doing blitz and classical chess Monday Wednesday Friday and um, it's you know it's a lot of fun when people actually sometimes watch and play at the same time but um, for other players you know it's distracting and they you know they find it better if they just play rather than listening to me commentate on the game I think you know it can be too many you know sort of chefs spoil the soup Kind of thing going on when you listen to other people talk while you're trying to concentrate so for certain players i think it's better off you know you're better off if you just play and don't hear this outside voice maybe just play and like listen to the stream when you're done after the fact mr viagra i'm expecting an active game from you uh don't what else to say on that subject pirayu in action all right, dude. I'm going to keep it with the Sicilian with the stronger players here. Keep within the Sicilian. I didn't play D4 yet, I don't think. Sorochi isn't here. Yeah, he was here earlier, and he gave up on me. It was a long wait. Um, I've been trying to get the stream to work for like an hour and a half. So I, I, absolutely, I absolutely forgive anyone who bailed on me. <laughs> he plays hard. Viagra. All right, that's a good one. So guys, Ayesta is here. One of the few regulars who, uh, you know, Soltigo, Ayesta. Um, one of the troll actually hung in with us and it's late for him. Silly Turtle was with us before. Um, let's try to mix in a couple other openings to make it a little bit interesting. Jake Tarallo, I like to play the King's Indian attack by transposition the French is not my favorite. I'm gonna try something a little bit unusual against the French. Good luck to all. What what about wooden pieces? Um, yeah by the way guys take your time. Also if you get me in time pressure, be merciful. Don't everybody try to like flag me at the same time. I would prefer the results were I don't know what to say. Um the results would depend on on the play you know rather than time so hopefully that would be the case so I'm playing in Zimul Zimul in Russian it's Zimul in English it's Simul okay c4 e5 mr. Viagra speaking of Rachmanov the master of spamming lesson 
He likes to play knight f3 here, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> interesting variation. I don't think that it's very critical, but uh, creative. Mr. Rachmanov. Rachmanov. So, good player, though. D4. I don't see that about a lot of, like, modern grandmasters. You know, the average run-of-the-mill 2600, who I really have a lot of respect for. Um, Rachmanov is there. E6, that guy is just, he's just a good player. Um, so Franco 2000. All right, now Carl Sari played the Franco, well, I guess it's not a Franco Benoni unless I play, you know, D5, E6 for black. Too many Kings Indian attacks here. I'm gonna try to play something a little bit different. Once I lost to Vladimir Burmakin with B3. D3, bishop g4 just seems to neutralize white's opening entirely. Uh, therefore, maybe e3 is actually better than b3. Something different. I'm just bored with the king's Indian attack every single game. What is the Franco Benoni? Franco Benoni is when you play c5, like d4, c5, and then d5, e6. It's just called Franco Benoni because e6 gives it a French kind of feel. They didn't have a good idea for a name for that particular opening when they entered it into the encyclopedia or whatever um noob training noob training we did play once before i forgot about the game oh noob training is playing like multiple games he's playing zug addict in another simul now zug addict i do not know him it's a zimul ah zimul i get it okay I thought it was Zimmel because of your Russian accent, man. Here I am being so naive. All right. All right, so it's a modern defense, but I thought, you know, we could, of course, he can also transpose to, to a kind of like queen pawn game with like c4 at any time since he hasn't played knight c3 yet. Let's play d6 and await, await uh, king's Indian, a little bit of king's Indian. Um, and then here I play g3, bishop g2, but... What to do now? Um, you know, just transpose to another English opening, I guess. You're, you're, unless you're, you're into Rachmanov territory with knight f3. I don't know. All right, the, the queen's gambit accepted is not a, not an opening I have a very good repertoire against. Zug is a young national master. I had no idea if he's young or old. Although, the fact that I don't know him probably increases the chances that he's young. But there are middle-aged people who get master title like all the time especially when you're talking about like i don't know uscf national master i mean people achieve that with like 40 years all the time um silly turtle okay i don't really like the queen's gambit and honestly let's play knight f6 all right so e3 against the modern or king's indian i'll normally go c5 at some point guys we do this every week i'm sorry for the late start today if you'd like to donate to support the stream and help me buy new mice for my computers you can uh, you can do so by uh s sort of sending a um sending a donation via twitch man my mouse is like sticking um i'm always complaining about the mouse Send a donation via um, PayPal. I also have a YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. So here we go. Swear to, I swear to the almighty, I'm going to buy a new mouse. All right. So here, knight c6. I don't play a lot of e4. When I do, I normally go into a g3 formation against the Taimanov. Um, We'll see what happens here. So I like playing e4, but I just don't have enough theoretical knowledge to feel confident with white. You need a high-end gaming master blitz. Yeah, it's a good idea. That's why I'm, I'm like, I don't even play bullet because I'm so mouse handicapped. I need a mouse pad right now. I'm like playing with my mouse on a magazine. Um, not really an optimal situation. Okay, so he plays h3 here. I mean, if I play a6, maybe he goes... 
I wonder if we could play a kind of Benko after a6, c4, c5. Interesting, but probably not best. Um, a6, c4. I will just go into a King's Indian if he does that. High end gaming mouse sounds good. Aha, so Lubba Dubba Dubba goes knight c6 on me, which is a pretty interesting idea now. All right, we'll transpose some weird Kali system. Yogurt, Pilav yogurt. Sounds like a flavor. We've got a couple of good players. This is one of them. The last opponent was one of them. King's Indian. Um, I am starting kind of late today. Sorry about that. All right, we decided to play knight c3 rather than go into normal Benoni here. What does that mean? <clears throat> Not a whole lot. I play this for black, this kind of modern defense. A Nimzo, something I don't get a lot on here at least. Soltigo says, I'm afraid to play in a reading game since losing the mouse, the touchpad. Yeah, that's the problem with, with the, the, the wireless mouse, isn't it? Like, you lose it all the time. It's like a remote control for the TV. It, like, falls in the sofa and stuff. I had this roommate when I was in college. You know, one of those people who would, like... I mean, I don't know. He would just always take the remote control with him. Like, he would put it in his pocket. You know those people that are, like, controlling the remote control? Like... He takes it with him in his pocket to the kitchen, you know, when he goes to make a sandwich or something. I mean, that's a real control freak. That's how remote controls and things like wireless mice get lost. All right, knight to f6. This is just a really weak attempt at humor by me. Reverse Peart's defense, Larson style. You could call it other things too, but bent. Bent on that. All right. Um, now we've got a little bit of an issue. He's played e3 against me. It's like, what am I going to do? Play the semi-tarash. I think I'll transpose to a panov Karo Khan because at least I know that. Now c3, which is just an obscenely, an obscenely solid-looking move. Um, okay. Um, I guess I play knight f6. I don't know what a6 has to do with anything there. I don't feel like playing a mainline King's Indian today um, or any day. I just need to be better prepared. Um, all right, so King's Indians for both sides. We've got Sicilians, King's Indians, some English, some King's Indian attack type of stuff. It should be good, but I am burning a lot of time. Grunfeld. Jake is 2000, classical Nimzo against Silly Turtle. I'm gonna play b6, which is something I've been preparing or trying to prepare for a while. Uh, this is a queen's gambit. The London system against the old Indian, always a weird, I guess we'll just make it a King's Indian. Um, Ali Ayesta loves to play the London system. Very solid player. So Aniros, is that, what kind of name is that? Is that, I don't know, I'm trying to guess. Is it like Greek? Could it be Brazilian or Spanish? Um, is it even a name or is it just a made up name? All right, anyway, so G3, we've got it. Knight F6, we've got a E3, Queen's Gambit accepted, not too exciting for either side. I noticed that more and more people playing like e3 against the queen's gambit accepted it's um unusual for a 2200 player to play this move bishop b5 as this guy did i mean bishop b5 is considered like a beginner's move although it's not bad um it's not really theoretical the player that strong i would expect something you know more like book book opening knight f3 well, we could try something against Timmy, a little bit unusual. Worst tournament was when I playing the London system. Okay, London system, I think it's something that's that's useful, but 
but objectively, you know, it's it's kind of like a, this massive trend now, and it's just boring. Um, I'm really sick of it, and I want it to go away. Um, okay, so this guy didn't play into the Karo Khan. He just took the pawn. We should really play some kind of hedgehog. <clears throat> Knight B, D7. Don't know what to do. Let's play some moves. Normal Smyslav Kings at the end. I've got to move it along. Move it F4. Played against me by this Romanian master Karakesh. <clears throat> Cherichesh. If you change his name to Romanian. Um, Alright. Guy went King 9-4. Kings 9-4 went back to Knight F3. That is weird. Very weird. You know, just like moving the same piece twice. And I'll put my bishop on the long diagonal. So the Cherichesh, I lost against Cherichesh in this line like 10, no, yeah, like 10 years ago in an IM tournament. Right, I'm just trying to remember, I'm supposed to play e5, and I don't really like playing e5, but that's the move. I don't really like structures with e5. Soltigo just, is that a mouse slip? Like, seriously? I was playing with my six-year-old son yesterday Soltigo and and he basically did the same thing except when I played d5 um, he he retreated his bishop back to g2 so we'll see you know if if Soltigo identifies with my my six-year-old son or if he decides to go his own way <clears throat> bishop g5 there's no right right or wrong answer Soltigo after bishop h3 <clears throat> I hope it's a bad bishop for you no, I hope it's a good bishop. Okay, bishop g5 from Lou W A Y H S. Here I don't know whether I want to weaken my king side or not, you know, um, in this kind of situation. He's basically playing a uh, kind of Tory attack with the pawn h3, which is a little weird. Um, I don't know what to make of h3 in this situation. But anyway, I could play h6 or not play h6. I'm kind of on the fence, the proverbial fence about it. So, yeah, anyway, that's cool, man. My son is very bright. He, he's he's kind of new to chess. Doesn't really know all the moves. But um, but bishop h3 is obviously the mark of genius. Knight f3. Um, okay, so we're transposing back to something kind of quiet with knight f3. Silly turtle, though. Perfectly good move. And um, Jake Toralo had, had another... I had another game in a Grunfeld the other day. Looks like the Grunfeld is just a good opening all around. Very popular at all levels. Finally, we have some kind of theoretical game. Franco 2000 playing bishop g5, at least getting a rouser. Knight takes c6. This is one line. I don't think it's as good as knight f3. Um, are you in Hawaii? Nice background, yeah. It's... Actually, I should probably have another light on in here. How, how are we looking? Is it dark? Um, let me know if the lighting is okay. It's just, I'm I'm near the beach, so it's it's kind of a, it's a beach atmosphere. Bishop g4. I wonder about this now. B4. B4 is tempting, but I don't see how it really works. So we're just sacking a pawn. Huh. Bishop g4. What should I do? You know, I, I just don't see anything concretely wrong with that move. Um, h3 kind of weakens my king side a little bit. And just play like bishop f5. Queen a4. b4 is tempting. Maybe we go for the b4. What would happen if I played b4 and he played e4? And I take? That's getting pretty bizarre. All right, man. Let's just try it. It'll be fun at the very least. I'm not sure it's 100% correct for me. Internet Chess and I just played like the same game over and over again. I am not really paying attention in the early going. And then before I know it, here we are again in the same position. Now, bishop takes f6. We have the interesting possibility here of taking back with a pawn. 
maybe not good because he castles and then f5 is going to be hard to execute which we would really need to get in df5 if i take on d5 now um well it's just not that big a deal i guess I don't know if he has much to show. The open polo looks very casual. You haven't seen anything yet, man. It's it's not really a polo. It's it's I don't know. Do you call this a polo? It's just a casual shirt, man. Um All right. You don't want to see my sunburn. Sunburn my stomach in midweek and today my arm I just like keep missing one part of my body with the sunburn. Oh man, he played D takes C4. I was looking at this with somebody recently and we came up with something for white. Hold on. I think we came up with something for white here. Noob training. And we get a lot of this variation. The Caraclige. All right, Bishop takes C8 it is. I like my game, Soltigo. Shortigo. All right, I'm not showing a lot of Tom Selleck chess today. Chess today, get it? All right, anyway, this bishop will always need to retreat at some point. Knight on d7 now. Why knight d7 rather than knight c6? That is kind of weird. I mean, I'll just play knight c3, and we'll have some sort of transposition to a position where your knight belongs on c6, right? Um, Nothing I can do here. I mean, this is just the same old, same old symmetrical Tarash reverse kind of thing. Pirayu, I want to say Pirayu. Um, I can transpose to a. We can transpose to a, some kind of dragon with g6 here. That might actually be better than playing e6. And Bob. Bob is playing the Queen's Gambit Accepted. I hate the Queen's Gambit Accepted very, very much. I have to be honest. Kitty kiss. Kitty, kitty, hiss, hiss. Thank you for the cheer. Um, all right, so this one's going to get interesting. We have knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Queen a4 check. Knight back. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Queen takes. You know what? It's funny because I was, I was actually thinking you were going to play bishop takes f3 first in this position. Um... Does this work for me? Knight takes, knight takes, check. I mean, why not? Bishop back, take, 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 take. So why not? Balum. Do we accept somebody who's provisional there? Okay, bishop c4. Now, I don't know where we're at here, spiffy cat, but... Okay, you're supposed to play... You're supposed to play knight f3, as uh, Marian Cherichesh did when he beat me in Romania, 2007. Um... Knight takes c6 is supposed to be like a trap. Like you're supposed to play. I, I want you to play like, never mind. We'll get back to that. But here, um, we have a chance to win a pawn, but it seems kind of materialistic. So I think I'd rather just knock out his bishop. Hmm. It's kind of a tough call, actually. We can force him to lose his right to castle and other good stuff. Collector of souls and other good stuff. I, I just, I don't know, man. I just really like that white square bishop. So I was trying to show you guys this position. Like after bc, he's supposed to take on e5 when I can play knight g4. But Spiffy Cat played bishop c4 anyway. Eventually I'll get to make a move there. Um, any tactics like c5 in this position? e3 or e4 closing the game. Actually, e4. I like it. We're up a pawn or not? No, it's even material. Actually, I'm blocking my white squared bishop, but I have massive control of the center there. And this one, everything is good. We got a solid game. I don't know. Brundle Philly, thank you for the compliment. What's wrong with bishop takes b7 instead of queen a4? Check. Bishop takes b7 was playable in some lines. Um, bishop g5 now this move is actually my favorite move I played that against Alex, Alexei Yermolinsky to beat him in a very very nice game if I do say it myself 
many moons ago, but um, I've also faced the young Hikaru Nakamura. Young Hikaru Nakamura and I drew when I played like H6 and G5, but I don't really like H6 and G5. Um, so the other option is to play Queen B6. H6 and G5 is considered to be main line. Okay, Franco 2000 is, is going along the main line here. I lost a game to Daniel Gurevich in a theoretical game last month in that line. Um, he was suspiciously well prepared for a variation that, uh, well, um, he couldn't have been sure I was going to play. Okay, Knight F1, interesting stuff. I was going to play E5. But, you know, I mean, things have changed since I played Queen E8. This guy traded on F6, and now, like, the whole position is completely different from what it was, like, a short while ago. I'm actually going to go into a hippo here. I don't want to play E5 so much anymore there. Knight B4 is a threat, so I'm going to hit him with A3. Fotar, bishop d6, may in fact be the best move, although usually it's not recommended to block your bishop inside the pawn chain. This is just an alien type of position. I don't know what to call this strangeness. I don't really want to put all my pawns on dark squares in this game, but... what to do all right guys thank you for joining hope you become a gm is this something you're pursuing it's something i used to pursue and then i kind of like lost track i started playing poker for well 10 years um for 10 years i was like more into poker than chess and uh unfortunately it uh, took something off of my my chess fastball um we we definitely have taken a few steps back off of our off of our prime but it's still something that I, I i think you know could theoretically happen um okay franco 2000 we're entering the he's not playing the line that um he's not playing the critical line that uh daniel gurevich played against me it's different this is also though kind of a decent line for white take take what am i going to do here again Take, take, queen, a5. It's a solid line for white as well. Um, yeah, I think I could still become a GM, but it's definitely not easy when you're, like, over 39. Or you're 39 forever. Also, it's a question of time and, and finances. Um, I think I could definitely do it with unlimited resources, but with limited resources, it becomes a real tough question to get the GM. Um Bishop d2 here, super quiet move, but why not? I mean, it's very solid. I don't really know what to do now. He could even castle queenside, going psychopathic on me. Um, I don't know what to do. I mean, castling now, is he, is he seriously going to play castles queenside? I mean, I'm not afraid of castles queenside, just asking a question. If I play c5, can he play d5? Another interesting question. Probably not. Um, I probably just swipe a pawn if he does that. I don't know how good the pawn is, but all right, let's go for it. Something active. This is a a line that this guy Lev Goodman used to play. Wojtkiewicz played it once against me with Black. Not that great for Black, but just something to kind of throw out there. Something a little different. Okay, um, rook e8. I imagine he slayed a lot of... What? <laughs> this guy's funny, man. I was going to just repeat what you were saying. Just too pornographic, man, for this... My G-rated stream. I'm not G-rated, but my stream is. Bishop b2. All right. <laughs> I'm more like PG. Maybe PG-13. I'm not even PG-13. I'm just... It's too... We're just too PG around here. Okay, Queen D2. 
um, what um, what are we doing here? This is actually it's actually some kind of Pierce defense. I'm not even playing King's Indian anymore. Uh, yes, has done this to me before. Um, it's kind of a problem. I don't really like my setup all that much. I guess we go like robotic there with knight bd7. On Eros, what do I want to do here? He's not playing the main line. The main line is something like taking on d4 and playing bishop c5. So the way Aniros is playing here is like more of an old school kind of solid setup for black. I guess we play a4 and we just like have some kind of bind on the queen side. The good old queen's gambit accepted, which I hate with a passion. Oh man. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. We're playing the hippopotamus here. White gave up his dark square bishop. Pirayu in action. Um, it's a kind of um, dragon now after bishop g7. There was this really, I guess he's dead, Vito Lynch. There was a really interesting Latvian player named Alvis Vito Lynch and he would play like bishop d5, bishop g5 and queen e2 against the dragon. But um, Pirayu can't do that because he's castle king side. Anyway, um, Franco 2000, we're supposed to play queen a5 now. And I guess this is this is kind of an annoying variation, not very, not very dynamic. For me, I just realized chess players naturally have good memories, so of course they memorized openings. That goes without saying. Um, but you know, not everybody has a good memory. My memory has been kind of fading lately. Um, I think I need to do some like crossword puzzles or something. Okay, so e4. Ooh, knight g4. This is this is a bizarre setup. I mean, knight b6 followed by knight g4. He's kind of violating like multiple principles, like moving the same piece twice, moving the same piece twice. It seems strange. Queen b3 doesn't do a whole lot. Um, I want to play like e4, but um, takes on e5 doesn't seem that great for me I'm actually confused here maybe e3 just a quiet move take back with a pawn on on e5 this is just really strange very very strange position maybe I should taking on g4 develops his pieces for him I mean, this is bizarre dude knight b6 knight bd7 followed by knight b6 and knight g4 Looks like I'm making all normal moves and he's just knight b6 and knight g4. What is this about? How about queen b3? Putting more pressure on d5. You know, I was thinking about this a minute ago and then I had second thoughts. And I know why I had second thoughts and I'm having them again. It's, it's impossible to find a good square for my queen in this position. B3, it ends up getting hit by bishop E6, and and on D2, it gets hit by knight C4. This is just really strange. Um, I mean, I'm half tempted to play like knight F3, and just like say, what's up with your knight on G4? Wow, this is just too bizarre. Knight G4. Knight D3, bishop takes D4, knight B4. Losing a pawn, that's always good. Um, A4 just does nothing. H3. E3. I mean, I'm not in love with this either. E3, knight takes knight, pawn takes. My bishop's like trappable on F4. Well, this is just a really weird position. I just, I'm kind of stymied by this because it seems like Black's just violating two fundamental principles and I don't see any way to take advantage of it. Just move both knights twice and I don't see a good move for white. e4, knight takes e5, 
pawn takes e5, um, d4 there for black. Actually, maybe he can't support that pawn sufficiently. So maybe e4, knight takes, pawn takes. It doesn't leave me with much. Um, I don't know. But we've got to make a move. We don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm going to, to drop my knight back here. Okay, so um, queen problem, usually in this line. That's what I was looking at with my friend or student earlier. Um, although a4 might be a move that we need to think about. I think it's a move we need to think about here. Um, hi hippopotamus, don't need to play e5. We could play e5 though. I mean, the thing is, I think I ought to just play e6, not e5. Okay. Anyway, back to uh, reality here. Not really a great place for this bishop. Bishop g4, I've played before. b6, I've played before. Um, yeah, I mean, let's try to keep a conversation, you know, non not perverse if we can but I've certainly seen worse oh yes we got a free piece I love it I love the free pieces it's so rare that we get one I feel like I just like won the lotto or something um, oh you stopped e5 well that is a small problem I, I didn't really think you were gonna stop my e5 we didn't actually stop it. I mean, he just played e4. He's threatening e5 himself. For some reason, I thought I was just going to get in e5 <clears throat> without a fight. And that may have been like a, a bad assumption. Um, I'm a little concerned about this, this, uh, this position. This is not really what I wanted to do. And I don't like my position that much. All right, so taking on e5, it opens up my bishop on e7. I think that it's a bad move. Just to keep it simple, we'll try to keep the comments simple to make life easier for everyone. The bishop f4, I don't know, we were provoking him to make a move he wants to make anyway there. Is that a good thing necessarily? Tough call. All right, the queen on a dark square. We're going queen e2 here. I've got two queen's gambit accepted. No, the other one's a tarash. Uh, sorry, tardic over queen's gambit. This is it. They're like back, back to back, so they're getting. I'm getting confused. Similar structure. Silly turtle took on c5, giving us two options as far as recapture. I mean, bishop takes is a little more secure, like less risk also less dynamic but given this many games at once Ahmad Ahmad with the old Queen c7 creating kind of irritating and awkward tension along the c file that I never really fully know how to deal with um, in many cases okay we want a piece here so we're gonna try to keep this keep this simple e6 and blocking the bishop on c8 Fotar is generally not recommended Although it may not be that bad. And in this case, here we might consider taking with the with the bishop actually. Because my f7 pawn is is looking pretty pretty vulnerable. Uh, maybe maybe not the best though, we'll see. I think you have a problem here, sir. Queen a4. Wubba double lubba. And Pirayu in action played knight d5. Which I can't just play e6 and kick him out because he wins my pawn on d6. And otherwise he has pressure on the old the old long diagonal. I mean the, the file, sorry. File long diagonal, whatever. Um weird. I could play bishop g4 in this position. Strange but simple move. Alright, now the plan was to take with the pawn. I could take with the bishop here and and then he plays f6, I lose all sorts of tempi. 
I don't think that's really right. Um, now queen e2 followed by rook d1. What is my original plan? I don't have anything direct unless I have e5, which I don't see happening. Actually, black's pretty solid here. Hippo. We've got a good hippo, but it's very much a long-term kind of position. It could take like 80 moves to uh, to prove black's advantage with the two bishops. C5 might be a good starting place, though. Um, so bishop g5. Spiffy cat is kind of getting on my nerves. Uh, though I do want to trade dark square bishops, but I can't because of this nastiness. I mean, God, do I have to play bishop e6? That's sort of sickening. Not really what I had in mind. But now I've put myself in a situation where it's almost like forced. If I play bishop b5 check, bishop b6 check, followed by knight g4. He doesn't have any threats, and I'm threatening knight f2, as well as knight e3. He has some tricks, though. Bishop e5 check, i6 check, king h1, knight g4. He's got bishop e7, all sorts of nasty stuff. <clears throat> I don't know this guy, man. Spiffy cat seems pretty good for 1200. All right, rook d1. We're going back. We can win a piece here. Never mind. Second piece. Internet chess. We just always have the same game every single time. And now noob training goes for an exchange of pieces, which looks right. Noob training. I think this guy gave me a really tough game last time as well. What is his real rating? 1620. Um, this is like a professional variation he's playing for black that um, Imre Fanchi played against me. This guy is like this really uber solid 2400 player um, who almost never loses a single game. Fanchi Imre plays this for black against me. I thought I found something for white, but I'm not seeing it here. And what am I supposed to do? Knight takes e4, bishop takes h4. Uh, maybe there's something there. Let's give it a try. Big hole on d5. I'm not sure how significant it is, but it's probably something. And then we've got the dark squares. Dark squares in this position is what we're looking for. The Mama Duck says, Not his case, the record is lopsided. Where is the boss today? Um, oh, the boss today is, um, I'm in the USA. We're in, we're in summer beach mode. Um, how am I taking this pawn? Do you want to take with a knight? Sorry, guys, I can't really, um, I can't really pick up all the all the questions in the chat when I'm doing the simul. Like in the, in my weekday streams when I'm playing Blitz and stuff, I can pretty much answer like everything. But here it's a little tough because I got so many games going. This hedgehog looks like equal. Okay, Timmy played knight g5, which is it's a move, I guess. I mean, it's not bad. Pretty pretty committal. Knight takes c3, f6. Do I really want to develop your pieces for you? I don't know, guys. The Lev Gutman defense isn't that great, but it's just something kind of designed to, um, to confuse people, get some kind of new position going on. I think I should keep the tension here against Lou, who's moving very quickly. Soltigo He's turned this into some kind of weird Queen's Indian. And then, and now I was hoping for some sort of trick. I can take on c5. That gets pretty weird. He takes on h4. Not sure I want to do that. Um, we could take on e7 and play d5, but it looks really equal. Wait a second, he's just hanging his a6 pawn. 
Um, all right, I'll take it. I mean, sold. I'll have double pawns on f3, but I mean, I don't think that's a big problem. So, Wesley, what are we doing here? He played h6 Fotar. I think normally we're answering with b3. I think anyone here is using an engine. I have no way of knowing that. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you this early into any games, and I would never really know for sure. But I guess they made a bad move. I don't like bishop h6 here. You know, you've, you've stopped me from playing e5, and I think you should keep it that way. <clears throat> Franco 2000. Bishop d2. All right, we're, we're still in book. Am I supposed to play a6, I think, and then move my queen next turn? Um, Ahmad, what do we do? Try to undermine his diagonal. This, this sort of diagonal. Uh, maybe carve out a outpost on like c4 and d6. We could take on on e5 and play like knight d2, c5, knight c4 maybe. Bishop g3 is interesting. So c5 is interesting. I don't know, guys. <clears throat> kind of a tough call there against Ahmad. This position looks, it looks equal-ish. Not that thrilled with my game. Yeah, Jake Tarallo. Um, I mean, this is just insane, like what he did. Like he, he basically violated two different principles and um, he's getting away with it somehow. I just, I don't really understand. You know, that's pretty strange. This is not a new player, though. He has a few games, a thousand games. Um, not really a happy camper right now here. But we're going to try to sack, sack a pawn temporarily. Rook takes, rook takes, rook d1. I don't understand what I'm doing here. I mean, he's picking off my e5 pawn. He's used very little time. He made two strange moves, and I couldn't find anything convincing after tanking for, like, a long time. Um, I mean, I can sack a pawn, but it's like nebulous compensation. I don't really see what I've got here. Besides a mouse problem. All right. d5 is a strange move. I think he's just losing a pawn there. So we're gonna grab this pawn over here. I'm normally not that materialistic, but I don't think I have anything else in this position um, to play for other than this pawn. And then this c2 is a threat, so we're gonna go back or play bishop a3. I think we're up like a couple pieces here. So nothing to worry about there. Good hedgehog in this game. Um, and then Soltigo, he played very strangely in the opening in this one. So, I don't know. Just develop as quickly as possible. Try not to get in time pressure. Um, you think I'm accusing someone? I don't think so. Dude, this guy, Brundle, is like making accusations for me. Brundle, please don't you know, instigate like disputes in my stream. I'm not accusing anybody, dude. Why would a computer make two moves that violate opening principles? Can you explain that to me? <laughs> I don't really understand how that makes sense. Um, all right, now we've got bishop d4. Okay, now pawn takes pawn. Bishop e7, we're gonna retreat and then reload, make play like a hedgehog. I don't like my game, but I don't know what else to do here. All right. We have enough discussions in many, many streams about computer cheating. It's a very 
common theme to like instigate trouble and make people angry so we're just gonna try to like avoid it if if I think somebody's using a computer I'm just not gonna play them anymore um, not gonna make a big deal about it so Queen c7 many many years ago I had a game against Charles Hurtan but he put his bishop on d6 in a similar position here we could have a problem because I wanted to all right we're gonna have to take on d6 and I think this is okay f4 um, man I hate this kind of position it's so blocked like nothing going on it's very hard to maneuver okay King b1 from Franco 2000 he's a good player I think this is still book it's really um, it's really how to describe it is e6 a move here I don't think so now knight knight d5 yeah, I've played this position on a few occasions. It's not a lot of fun. Now I have to take with a pawn, and um, black has a little bit of compensation. Here we go. Do I want to take on h6? Probably not necessary. No, don't spike things. If you want to spice things up, you know, the, the sexual comments are probably better than talking about computers, because that's just like a real, a real issue that just like sets people off, and it's like, it's almost as bad as like politics so the computer cheating is just really old and uh, I'd rather just not even like you know discuss it like I'm just gonna like decide if anybody if I think anybody's using a computer I'm not gonna go into details about it we'll just you know not play them anymore or whatever it, it's just it's not worth it um, all right I'm about to drop a piece let's not do that let's play 92 <laughs> anyway I'd rather you know I'd rather the the strange sexual innuendos than computer cheating discussions. Um, all right, bishop takes d5. We snuck a pawn there. Jim Hedgy is just not on his game today. Okay, guys, the stream started late, just so you know. Um, we managed to win a pawn here. The stream started late. I had some technical problems. I have been offline for a couple of days because of uh, verification issues. All right, man. I have no idea. I think I'm going to lose this game. I just get a feeling when I'm going to lose certain games. And um, and then sometimes it's basically like, how did it? What if I take on B7? If I take on b7 and then, yeah, why don't I just take on b7 and, and stop being negative, right? I'm just too negative. Um, silly turtle, hedgehog. This is our second hedgehog that's virtually identical to the other one. Pirayu in action. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I sound like one of the Muppets. Um, what is that Muppet that goes like, yep, 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 yep. All right, bishop g5, e6, take, 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 take. Queen takes d6, bishop takes f3. He's got an in-between move. Okay, whatever, we'll just do it. I can't calculate. It just feels like I have enough compensation. Soltigo played e3. I was kind of hoping for c3. Um, I don't know why in that position, whatever. Um, what if we play queen b6? Or h5 even. We could just start attacking him on the king side with a psychopathic h5. Let's, let's do something fun for a change. Um, so Bob Sakamano, um, again, anyway, her time played with bishop on d6 against me. The exact same position. I think it's a little bit better. Bishop b7 is, it's just a tiny bit more passive. So, it, you know, it's not going to matter if I play d takes c, obviously. Um, against her time, I think I played h3. This is a game from like 20 years ago, um, maybe even older than that. Got a new cat. That's cool. I like talk about a new cat. Um, yeah, I get it. Yeah, the verification issues, well, it was just the fact that I have a phone I couldn't get a text message from in Hungary, so I had to, I had to verify a new phone, and, uh, and that meant that um, I had to wait like three days to, to get the new phone verified here on Twitch. Which is really annoying. I don't think, I mean, I realize the security is, is important, but I don't think it should take three days, um, my opinion. But that's just my opinion. 
Okay, guys, I don't know what to do here. Maybe we should take on c5 at some point. Whatever. All right. This is a win. <laughs> we're up a pawn. We're going to skewer in exchange. I like my dark squared bishop. He's a good guy. Okay, we've got knight f2 check or knight takes g5. I don't really love my dark squared bishop too much. Knight f2 check. Take it take I don't know um, I mean we should be winning one way or another here so let's just play chess two bishops pointing at my king should I play knight e4 here I can't I mean I could if I want to sack a pawn actually it's kind of interesting knight e4 bishop takes g7 rook g8 maybe a little bit unrealistic I'm getting a kind of time pressure please don't flag me um, anyway, <laughs> this position against Timmy looks like equal. We're going to win here. Against Wubba Lubba, he let me get this like brutal pin on him. And then in this game, it looks like, well, if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we won't lose. I don't know how else to call it. Lock down the, maybe Bishop A3 was a better move there. Oh, okay. I have to admit, I didn't see this move. Um. I play bishop g3. I'm lucky I I don't lose anything. Um, all right, bishop b5 looks fine. Controlling everything. And then finally, Pilav Yogurt played like this, this position. <laughs> it's like the opening of the game, man. I mean, I played this position with Emil Solansky, uh in five seconds. Um, okay, we spent like 30 minutes on a standard position there let's just take things um, okay so this one yeah it looks a little bit better for white although I don't really like Bishop e3 particularly oh man what if I played Bishop e6 and then what happens doesn't feel right what else can I do though? Knight a6. I really like this. Um, we have a small technical problem here. I don't like my position. We take on c4. I guess that's not that bad. It's not that good either. Okay, this this position definitely. So this concerns us a little, although we're. What's the count here? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're up a pawn. Um, it's not going to be for long. We're not up a pawn for long. All right, what do we do? Like rook d1. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. You know, trading. My mouse is horrible. Bishop e3. Exchange sacrifice here. Yeah, I don't think that's really good. I don't think it's enough. If I play rook takes c3, I probably looked at this before and decided it's not enough. Rook c6 might even be a move in this position rather than the standard. Rather than the standard. On the other hand, okay, let's say I go here. It's a little more natural to put the rook on c8, of course. Um, rook d8 now. I was thinking about taking on c5 kind of lost interest after rook d8 so it looks like I have to find another option hmm I don't like my game Bob Sakamenko's a brand new account I shouldn't have played Bob it's very strange he's got a classical rating of 11 games but it doesn't say question mark like 11 games is a standard rating that's that's a established rating what's up with that Bob you're not supposed to play with less than 50 games you totally tricked me. Um, all right. How come it's not a question mark with 11 games? Like that's some established rating, seriously? That's weird. I thought it had to be more than 11. 11 is just extreme. Um, Pilev Yogi said he's not familiar with the opening. Yeah, of course, bishop b5. You've got to do that. Um, but bishop takes c6.
Bishop takes c6. I think that castles is the move is the move there. Instead of bishop takes c6. Um okay, Lou Lou lost the rook. Lou lost a rook. We'll take it. Yeah, this concerns me, this game against Timmy08. Um, I'm happy to get the rooks off against Jake Tarallo because I thought if he plays rook b8, he's probably better. After trading rooks, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Viagra is waiting for <laughs> me to get in time pressure. He just got disconnected or something. It's pretty strange. Anyway, um, okay, I forgot I have a queen here. It's kind of crazy. All right, so anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. I, I'm going to be back tomorrow, Wednesday and Friday, with a stream, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, where I play Classical and Blitz Chess here on Lee Chess. I'm normally streaming... Um, European time, but we are we are in the U.S. of A for the summer of uh, just a couple of months. I'm going to be here. Um, I'm still a little bit worried about this position, but I think I should be able to hold it together, just barely. I feel like I'm playing Konstantin Chernyshov or something. Um, all right, yeah, H4, Timmy 08. Let's check how many games this guy has. 411. Um, I mean, this is pretty dynamic to come up with h4. That's the move I was afraid of. So, I mean, black is in some trouble here. Very dynamic move. Bd. Alright, we're just gonna be up a rook. All right, we're up a queen here, so I just want to trade pieces and get get it over with. Against Wubba Dubba Lub Lub, uh, luckily I have 95. Otherwise, I was running out of things to do there. Um, Mr. Viagra played c6. It's I think your your prescription is uh, is running out if that's your move. Um. No, c6 not really a very dynamic move in all seriousness. Here, I think this hedgehog needs an a6. Okay, <clears throat> so knight takes e5 is threat threatened. Um, and it looks kind of serious, so I should probably play queen e7. But against Piraju, or Pirayu, I should say, um, I think we have enough dynamics there. So as we as we progress here, I'm not really going to be able to answer the questions and comments on the stream. I'm I'm in a lot of sort of time pressure typically, so we just try to try to do the best I can here. Um, Timmy 08, I mean, dude is coming after me to get me like violently with H4, so I've got to react very very quickly here, or else I'm going to get my head handed to me. Speaking of head handed to me, Ahmad trying to kill me with Bishop F5. And then this just game, we're up a queen. Um, in this one, we, um, you know, we're going to have some technical problems. I mean, we're up a pawn, but it's uh, it's a little problematic. I mean, my king side is kind of messed up, and he's got a pretty good knight. I'm not sure I really have a big advantage there, despite being up a pawn. Um, I shouldn't be worse, but... Yeah, that's where it's at. Um, I'll just give a little brief summary of each game. I think we're slightly better here, but I'm not really sure what to do. Maybe a3. Here we're up a rook. This should be money in the proverbial bank. Um, yeah, so Mr. Chernyshov here I was joking about. Um, we've got to be very careful with this guy going after his pawns, though on the queen side could could go both ways, uh, that position. Pirayu. Should I take on, on F3 like Intermezzo? 
kind of why why would you okay I think that we're okay there um, pilaf yogurt it's a new position for me um, my intuition I mean I really want to like fianchetto my king's bishop that's what I'm trying to say I guess let's do it I don't really like weakening myself but I don't think I have another option for developing my pieces. Mr. Viagra, c6, not really a great move. I said that already. Taking here, we're hedgehogging. Uh, b6 was played, so Fotar. Finally dealing with um, with his queenside problems. Love to play e4 here. I just can't figure out how to make it work. I'd have to sack a pawn um, really violently with like e4 knight takes. Pawn takes, knight takes, pawn takes, knight d2, f5, f3, e3. That looks really gross. Um, so I can't get in e4. Maybe we should just play like rook e1 or something. Thing is, he's going to play bishop b7. I'm not overly thrilled about that either. So we'll switch plans and play for his bishop. Okay, g5, weakening my proverbial king side. Love it. We're, um, again, just trading pieces here. So Jake played a5. Now I can hunt that a pawn with bishop d2. And that should clarify things. Clarify things. I was worried I was going to be worse in this game against Jake. But I managed to avoid being worse. Um, okay, whatever. Maybe rook e6 is better. So we at least get to develop our king side. B2 is hanging, but I have no time for that business. And then, okay, against Soltigo, I decided to play this really crazy h5 move because his king side's messed up. I mean, don't try this at home, but I, I think that it's somewhat justified. Um... Though there's still some issues with how to coordinate the rest of my pieces in this caveman type of with this caveman type of idea that I'm going for here. Not really sure what I'm doing. I was getting a little bit getting a little too fancy with the uh, with the h5. He just stopped it. Rook on the seventh. So guys. What's so dynamic about h4? Well, he's basically trying to checkmate me, um, blow my brains out. I think it's <laughs> it's the best move in the position. I mean, if I don't play h5, I'm probably like getting brutalized. You're controlling the game. And um, there's just no question. You know, a hesitant player would perhaps not want to weaken themselves. But it's it's absolutely it's absolutely like an essential move I think. Um, okay, queen b one, <clears throat> whatever man you're trying to you're trying to play the ready two. All right, now we break it open with d four. We've got just a few players that are like not moving. It seems like a couple of boards. Not really sure where to put my rook in this one. Silly Turtle and the other guy, the Hedgehogs, are both players where they're not like committing to anything. Um, okay, this was the Queen's Gambit accepted. We got an isolated pawn to deal with. Not the end of the world, obviously. Um, knight e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop c3. Is uh, interesting but it shouldn't really be a problem. I can also just play bishop b2. That might create tactical issues. All right. Yeah, so we trade pawn for pawn. Hopefully my a pawn just runs here, and, and Jake will actually have to sacrifice a piece to stop it. That would be nice. Um, c4, e6. Attaining my pawn center could lead to some trouble. Uh, Franco has some space advantage here. Some not that happy with the way this went down i have bishop f5 though 
what's my follow up with bishop f5 there basically is none i mean i can get my bishop out damn it looks like i have to play e5 and that's not really great how about bishop f5 rook d2 e5 I don't know, man. I'm not really thrilled about my position there. Lou just played too quickly. And now this guy's castled queen side. So he's just trying to blow me away. Um, or the guy played h4 against me. Now, I wasn't talking about that game. I don't know. Which game you guys were talking about h4? Okay, here we're up a pawn. Um, not a great one though. I wouldn't mind a minor piece endgame. Queen and knight endgames. Bishop d3 is good too. Timmy o8. Scaring the life out of me. I'm gonna have to play f5 now, weakening my king side even further. Entombing my own white square bishop. All right, we're gonna win this one in short order. The less games, the better. The more I can get to these other games kind of quickly. Here, I don't know. I didn't really wanna trade rooks. I thought f4 keeping him off of g5, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm not that sure what's the best plan. Okay, Soltigo played a3. And I really regret playing h5. I mean, if I hadn't played h5, I, I could basically be doing anything right now. Um, this I didn't expect, but it's probably... I want to say it's not as good as rook d2, but now I'm having second thoughts. Um, and I should be able to hold this. Oh man, his rook is actually pretty good on d3. I don't like this anymore. How about g6? Man, I am in trouble. Feels like bishop f5 was like a blunder because of this move. And now we're, we're entering like a nightmare situation. Holy shit. Bishop f5, a blunder. I should have just played e5 right away. Because the bishop takes d3, rook takes d3, and then it just gets worse and worse after that. He's gonna... He's gonna put his rook on b3, and it's like game over. Um, I'm so screwed now. This is just... This is just a disaster. Wow. He probably like almost resigned here. I'm just like paralyzed. And running out of time too. Maybe bishop g6, as odd as that might seem. Strange move. Knight c5. Okay. Um, good move. I could play a6. But then I'm committed. a6. Actually, time is the issue. Bishop a6 now. All right, queen takes or knight takes. Or knight takes d5. Hey, that's just a simpler way of playing. Um, a slight advantage for us, not much. This is made. I had made in one, but I decided not to do it because I'm not really paying attention. So, I like my game here, but at the same time, it's not that 100% clear. We also have a good game here. Also, it's not like devastatingly clear. Bishop c5 weakening his position, like it. And then this one. All right, let's just move quickly. H5. Wow. I mean, that's 
Okay, for me, I mean, I don't get mated on the back rank. So, Hiraiu didn't take on d6. That was... That was my main concern here. Um, Fotar. Fotar played cd6. It's a very good move. I guess we just play solidly now. I mean, there's no outpost on e5, so I'll just maintain the center. <laughs> this position, okay. Um, multiple ways to checkmate, but we might as well just keep it simple. Um, okay, I may have hallucinated something here, but I thought we were queening. Okay. Got mouse problems, so please don't try to flag me. My mouse is just awful. Um, e5. Maybe the time has come for e5 there. Mate, thank you for the game. Okay, bishop back to e2. Um, all right. I don't know. He's not really threatening anything directly. And then I want you to retreat and get out of my face. Yeah, I mean, the thing is I have bishop f4, and maybe Jake didn't see that. But I think that we're, we're going to force the win of material with this. Um, all right, now Black's weakened his king side brutally here. You guys, take your time. I mean, people who have like 50 minutes or 100 minutes or whatever, you know, you don't have to blitz me. I mean, it's not meant to be a blitz simul. The point was to play like... Um, You know, long, instructive games. A good move by Parayu, who played here with um, with rookie three. Yeah, everybody's like blitzing now. Um, I really don't like blitz simuls. If you have time, please use your time. I mean, I'm just not here to do blitz simuls. Knight g5, actually. The move I did against Charlie Hurtan a million years ago. <laughs> it might be crushing here. Um, looks really, really dangerous for, for black. But on the other hand, I don't see a knockout. Um, g6, queen h4, h5. f5, queen h4. Ought to be something for white. Yeah. This really ought to be something. Um, standard hedgehog now, b5. This looks really good. We've got bishop h6 now from Timmy. Timmy time, and I don't obviously want to take. Um, know about this game king h7 would force his hand a little bit but also waste time queen f6 maybe developing a piece looks better to me h6 now um, queen side majority in this game needs to play a role know your role queen d4 is a nice square for a queen centralized um, kings 9-4 Forcing me to play something. Okay, here we're better, but it's uh, hard to make progress very quickly. Looks like I like my game. Let's just make a sensible move. I mean, f4 might be possible too. You got to take a trip into town, so that'll be using up 20 minutes of my time. Dude, did you use like no time? Um, see, that's <laughs> really. All right, bishop takes f3. Yeah, I like bishop takes f3 here. We'll play like a rook ending. Um, okay, so he played finally bishop d4, which is perverse. Just a kind of perverse move. Franco 2000. Playing like god. God. Um really happy about this game. He's playing like God. 
Okay, e5, take, take. Maybe we'll live with that, I don't know. Or takes and play e5, and then take back. I mean, maybe that's all I can do. It looks horrible, though. It looks really horrible for me. e4 here, um, not necessary, I guess. You could take on d5. This looks good for white. I mean, a4 or something. What does that even do? <laughs> if I play a4, I feel like I need to reorganize everything. Queen e2 is a good blunder, losing like immediately. Okay, let's, let's try to reorganize. Knight h7, very well. Simplify. Try to keep it simple, trading queens. Yeah, this game is just torturous and horrible. And I never ever want to see a position like this again in my life. Uh, maybe we can hang on somehow. Just, it's like a nightmare. This is like a living nightmare. I mean, e5, take, take. Can I survive? Doesn't look real like possible to survive. I don't like king d7, particularly. Might be... Not that bad. Rook b3, rook c7. That's sort of horrifying. Um, but maybe it's not that bad. I don't know. All right. No no real time to think about it. Now I get an h4. He's threatening knight f5 here. Um, all right. Never mind. Um, knight f5 is threatened, so I guess I should take. You can also take with the bishop. And uh, white wants to castle in this game. So we could try a3 or queen c4. Queen c4 in particular looks interesting. Threatening a3. This rook ending is about equal. He's threatening rook c3 though. Maybe I should play c5. Okay, now in this game, I'm very close to a really strong kingside attack. Um... Maybe even d5 is going to like knock him out at some point. But I think we really need to get the last piece in the attack. He's threatening knight takes d4 and stuff like that. Bishop c3. I don't know if I did the right thing there. I might have made a mistake. Um, this looks like good, good knight, bad bishop type of stuff. All right. I hate trading this dark squared bishop, but it's leading to some some things that should be good for me all right check is check we are thinking about which way to recapture here with the king um timmy is playing like a champ it may be safer to take with the queen although he can put his queen on g5 in that instance i'm not so sure let's see king takes maybe in fact is better all right, and then e3. e3, it's, the problem is he's gonna trade into an ending then, and it's not really what I wanted, so I guess we go with h4. Got a good game there. Um, Franco played f4, which isn't a bad move. Hoping to just survive here somehow. Um, I'm like vibrating. All right. Not that much for fo for us like for us against Fotar, like a very small kind of small advantage. Queen f4, a subtle move. Queen f4. Of course. How about knight d5? I like it. Trading pieces in this nasty situation. Although I lose a little bit of time, I get rid of one attacking piece. I could do harm. Harm, harm us in the future. Um, okay, this is a good development, getting in d5. And then here, man, it looks like we're real close to putting black away in this game. I mean, f4. f4, pawn takes pawn, bishop, G5, bishop e5. I'm having hallucinations, that's always good. King h1. 
I'm also trying to just move fast if I can. Okay, Saltigo just played c4. I mean, it seems like we're all over him there. a5, maybe. We got a very minimal advantage here. I think I was a little bit optimistic going into this. Although queen takes d4 would force him to defend and uh, although what does that do objectively? You know, like doesn't do anything special for me. Let's just take it on our terms. Internet chess. What was that? Um, some kind of trick here? Man, I'm really not in a mood for this. I'm really, really not in a mood for this. I had like a thousand chances to kill this guy with bishop takes f3, and now I missed it. Um, great. Great, great, great. Past pawns must be pushed. And then speaking of past pawns must be pushed. Um, all right. We got this monster. What I really want to do is like allow knight d2 with a devastating fork. <laughs> it's all right, though. Um... I was thinking bishop f6 now. Look at that king on h2. What is he doing? His name is Kings, and he played king h2. What is that about? Um, darn. d5, breaking free. Kind of a tough call for me what to play there. I have a lot of good moves, a lot of good positions. Queen f6. It's like asking for it. Damn. All right, um, just go back. So, queen e7, yeah, I think we'll just slowly improve. Okay, we're just winning a pawn now, that's fine. Can we survive against Mr. Franco? It's looking pretty unpleasant, but it might be might be possible to live through this. I don't know, G6. Does anybody vote for G6? All right, B4. Man, I want to play F4. But I mean everything's everything's reasonable. Rook C4. Is there a back rank mate I should be aware of there? Probably. Probably a back rank mate I should be made aware of f5 all right we'll play a queen ending um this is slightly better for black but you know what <laughs> there's not a whole lot i can do to him um he's he's pretty compact here so it's gonna have to be a slow process and i'm not sure that was the best move uh, once again we're just a little better here, but I don't see what I can really do at the moment. Um, okay, knight e7, looking for my queen. That's a really annoying move. Okay, g4. You're asking for g4, right? I mean, you got to stop that. That knight move. And now here. We're just up a clear pawn. Knight g4, knight d7. I want to get rid of his knight now. But he has this check. I guess we defend our pawn. Um, this is a crazy position. I don't know, b5. His h4 pawn is just hanging. But I'm kind of scared to take it. So, for some reason, I don't know. All right. Um, right. He played a3 now. So, yeah, actually, white is hanging on here. Bishop takes c3, pawn takes c3, knight f6. Bishop takes c3, queen takes c3. And um, it's an ending where... I'm not sure if I'm really better. That's unfortunate. How about f5? 
It's a very complicated game after f5. Again, I'm not sure if I'm even better. My king is on e8, and I'm thinking about playing f5. I don't think that's normal, and I'm also having some hallucinations here. Maybe I should just castle. This guy is actually scaring me. He's 2,000. Um, I thought I was better, but I'm not so certain anymore. I don't know about this. This ending should be okay. So queen ending with passed pawn. He's pretty tied down, though he's likely to get a perpetual somehow. Okay, queen takes c3 allows queen takes e4 check, but it looks like some sort of trick. Oh no, I have knight f6. So it's not really a trick. All right, I'm going to hit and run here. Maybe take king f1, knight f6. Because if I don't, like, what am I going to do? Um, wow, c5. There's no back rank mate. How does this even work? How does this even work? Okay. We're getting kind of low on time. That's mental. Bishop h3. Um, going home. In this game, I just feel lucky to be alive. Like, I was very, very unhappy with my position um, earlier. But looks like we're okay. Uh, Queen e2. Mr. Soltigo still didn't really um, want a castle. I can play knight to d5 here. Ultimately... I want to play knight d7. His knight's very strong. I think I'd give him the pawn back here. Looks like... Okay, e5. That's kind of weakening. I'm going to play knight f6. This was the plan. Oh, I see. He has tricks, like tactical tricks. I see. So maybe, you know, he's got f3, but I can play queen f5 in that instance. So... If I castle, he's got these tricky, sneaky, sort of sick tactics. Um, this is e5, maybe. As strange as that seems, I mean, might be the best move. Okay, now we got c4, but he's going to play rook c3. I don't know what to do. So maybe c4 and then rook c5, rook c8 type of thing. His king is going to get to the center faster than mine. Okay, here. It's unpleasant, but we might survive. Um, this game. I don't know. We're just a little bit better. Noob training with the king centralization in the end game. Okay, this this is got to be good for me. I mean, I'm winning a clear pawn. He has a scary outside pawn, but it's not that devastating. Let's hope we don't make any blunders. Bishop takes f3. What should I do? Uh, maybe he could take with the take with the pawn. I don't know what I was even talking about as we get in some time pressure here. So knight d2. I was more concerned about knight g5, but whatever. I like, as I do often against Ayeste, I completely ruined a terrific position like last simul. Um, same thing, man. Just, he always uh, swindles me. Sort of strategically swindles me, it seems like. Okay, bishop c6, I don't really, d5, b5, whatever that is, whatever square that is, I don't really understand what that does. Um, oh, I see, so you want to go like queen e2 or something along those lines? Whatever. So I was talking about e5, I think, in this position, but I'm having hallucinations. My bishop, luckily, 
you know, doing everything there. Torturous endgame here that it looks like we should be able to hold um, barely. It's um, it's holdable. E6, E5, E6 maybe. Do I want to do E6? Maybe we just hang out. Um, Knight E5 now. I'm not really sure. We are in some time pressure. King position. You you switch from e4 to d4. Who is that? I'm just taking a break to answer a question. Um, future chess GM. You switch from e4 to d4 and it's working better. Check out Timmy time, man. He goes g takes f against me. He's trying to get me down the g file. I was concerned about that. Damn, dude. You know what? That's really irritating. Um, not not happy. I'm not happy I did that. That was just downright dumb. To give him anything here. Now I've got to set up some sort of defenses against this constant harassment he's going to deal on me. Um, Rook d5. Whoa. Okay, what am I doing? Rook d5, take, take, bishop f, should be 6, take, take, king there. Yeah, the problem is I've got a little issue here. Um, Ahmad's queen side is pretty fast. I mean, I can't stop that pawn, dude, if I trade rooks. But guys, I really would, would appreciate if you would play like it's a normal simul, not trying to blitz me on the clock. Um, and this game isn't so easy. I don't really know what to do. Um, I don't know what to do. All right, I'm just confused. Doctor Tactics is uh is all over me here. Yeah, Pilav Yogurt. He played Bishop B5 in the opening. It's over for me. I should have seen this. I mean, it was obvious that I'm just toast tactically. It's peace coordination, the idea of... Um, I mean, is there any way not to lose in one move? Probably not. I really should have seen this. Okay, I mean, the problem was there weren't a lot of good moves. I was already in a lot of trouble. In that game, um, it wasn't apparent till it was already quite late in the game. Back rank mate here, we've got to deal with. Okay, Timmy gives me a real uh, opportunity. I think I should trade queens, but the question is on whose terms. See, this ending could be a little bit difficult, actually, if he has protected past pawn. What if I take and play f4? probably not so bad um okay this is just a crazy game white just went crazy he's totally lost um okay this one he's starting to penetrate you know maybe i'm better off giving up that pawn and avoiding any perpetuals perpetuals oh, this sucks he's gonna go queen here and just have a million checks i don't, I don't think i can win this Hold on a second. Maybe I can. All right, noob training. We're going to try. So, Franco. Pilav's just winning. I mean, he saw this in advance. There's just no move for me. Um, I can just resign here. It's all tactics. Look how well his pieces are coordinated. Um, I just resign. There's no move. Bishop takes e5 resigns. I mean, unless I have some bizarre tactics, knight f6. Knight f6, bishop takes e5 resigns, or... Yeah, I mean, it's just resigns instantaneously. I have knight e4, um, but then 
rook takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop takes h8. I'll just resign that. That's hopeless. Um, clearly, game over. Now I was thinking f4, but maybe, I don't know. I don't like this, but I'll probably hold on. Now another good move from Ahmad, where I'm like actually in danger of even losing if I'm not careful there. And in this one, I threw away my advantage, which I mentioned earlier. Actually, he's really, really tricky, this guy. Very good defender, but also tricky. Knight f5 was played by Bob. Bob, that's pretty extreme. Uh, queen e2, the problem is I have check and take, which saves me. Okay, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, he's going into a rook ending. Maybe it's a draw. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. All right, we are suffering from time pressure. This guy's very solid, Fotar. My knight sucks. All right, we'll try knight c4. I don't know where to go. I've been trying to find a place for it for like hours. Um, all right, now I think I'm winning here. Oh no, I just walked into perpetual. I'm an idiot, really. I actually didn't see that was perpetual. I don't think it really matters at this point. I didn't see the queen g4 was perpetual too. Jeez. I don't think it was, I think it was probably a draw anyway. I mean, I was gonna take, take on e4. Okay. Okay, Bob, Bob is in trouble. Uh, this rook ending is interesting. I mean, it may be a draw, I don't know. Here, but we are in time pressure in multiple games. <clears throat> um, not really sure. Against uh, Franco, I think I got out of the woods pretty well. Rook, rook c5, could even play b5, but I think I should play this. Oh boy, I hope, I hope that moves okay. I really hope that moves okay. All right, um, now his king is coming up. I'm a little concerned. We need to centralize too. Yeah, this, this is a draw, dude. Unless I can, well, no. There's obviously no way to make progress there <clears throat> um, in that draw game. Okay, here we're winning. There's no way to defend g6. Well, yes, there. No, there is. There isn't any way to defend g6, any good way. Um, okay, his king is coming up now. No. All right. Yeah, this is a draw. Noob training. Um, I let it slip. I hallucinated. Hallucination. Oh. Knight there. You're threatening the c6 square. I'm not that happy about that. I have knight d3. I'm attacking a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, my knight is just a lost soul in this game. Back to your box, knight. Bishop takes d5. Wait a second. Oh, I have that. Master. The secret move. Um... Yeah, and Franco, I have to be a little bit careful here. Um, I'm not that sure. I guess this king and pawn game is, is a dead draw, though. It should be. I mean, it's like a fortress. I mean, I've lost, you know, I've definitely lost uh, Lost better positions. Uh, rook d3. We should be okay there. Okay. I think there's no back rank mate. King e4, and um, we're better mobilizing our guys. Okay, I think this is a draw, but you know he's got more space. Um, I, I kind of played into this without a real clear plan on this on this one. <sighs> Kings is actually threatening a fork. <clears throat> Whoa. 
We can take your queen, you take my queen, I take your queen. That wasn't really the plan, though, to be honest. I was trying to sneak a pawn on him. But, I mean, this was a little bit of a fantasy, you know, this whole plan. Knight takes b2. I think I, I maybe, like, was a little optimistic here. Um, now, where are you going over there? You know, I have pawns, too. But I don't like what you're doing there. Um, king d4, check, 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 check. So we start going with our pawns. How about that? Rook takes. We're winning. This rook ending is a win. This looks like a draw if I'm not an idiot. Um, and then he's going to try to push his pawn, of course. I have to go back. Okay. What's up here? We're going to reposition Mr. Knight. Mr. Knight is going to a new place. Okay. Wow. Um, I have pawns too. But he doesn't care about that. How about like rook a6, check, king b7, rook g6, a4, king d3. That's a little slow. Maybe I need to go with the king first. Go with the king first. The king goes back. Um, bishop takes pawn check. It's a little greedy, isn't it? Oh, man, this is kind of a disappointment. I mean, I really thought, you know, we were just owning him. But it's not that easy. This one, slightly better. But nothing simple. King's threatening my f7 pawn now. Okay, back to the usual <laughs> location. Um, yeah, I think we're going to create a force field here against Franco. Happy to draw, man. I mean, I was in trouble there. Alright, what's up with this rook c5 business? He's fine, dude. f5? I have pawns, too. And then e4 was my idea. For good or for worse. For better or for worse. Okay, we are winning in this game. This rook ending should be pretty, pretty easy. Um, maybe I should have played f5 here, but this this is a dead draw. Famous last words. Where am I going? Kings is coming back. Are you tying me down to that stupid pawn, dude? All right, try to play a little bit actively, I guess. What to do? Queen d8. Look at his king on h3. That's just mental. All right, we're grabbing the exchange. Man, my mouse is difficult. With me. It's being very difficult with me. Two connected pass pawns. That ought to be good, no. Two connected pass pawns, man. I said there's no way to defend. There, there is a way to defend. He has a way to defend. Um, but not forever. Darn it. D6? Yeah, actually, D6 is a pretty cool move. All right, let's go. Um, I was thinking trade queens here because I'm tired of blundering. Uh, this one is uh, slightly better for black, but not much. This uh, Goodman variation, I'm afraid this is like an equal. I thought I was better, but it's not really. Damn. 94? All rook in games are draws. I think I'm going to play f5. <laughs> and where is he going now? Oh. Yeah, this pawn is... These pawns are too much multiple we're talking about pawns in in the plural in plural f4 my a6 pawn is hanging he's coming back it's not a joke man this guy's scaring me um okay i don't think you've got an attack there so we're just gonna let you do whatever you want 
slightly better here, but it's not much. This is a win. Should be a win. So overextended. Though I don't know if I should drop this pawn. All right, slightly better here. But again, I think this is a draw probably against internet chess. Uh, we've got a really bad bishop here making this game. This game's pretty tedious, to be honest. Um, yeah, thank you for the game, Franco2000. I know it's late for you too. Taking on F2. I don't know what's going on there. All right, fortunately, Kings hung a knight because it was getting kind of annoying that game. Um, here, we have a couple of possibilities. I mean, Queen G4 is also also on the agenda. Queen G4, but objectively, I don't know. All right, let's give it a shot. Bishop E5, Queen takes. Right. So king h6 now, I've got the very evil knight f7 check. There's also d6, doesn't do anything, except um, we'll close the lines. This has got to be winning, I just don't know how. <laughs> I just don't know how. Um, rook takes. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, especially those of you who've been here since the beginning because I had to restart the stream. I mean, I had to like figure out what was wrong. It took me an hour and a half to get it up. Please, no sexual innuendos. Um, I set myself up for that, but there was a guy named Viagra today. Um, anyway, it took me an hour and a half to get the stream started today, so I really appreciate those of you who, who did stay with me and bear with the technical process of getting it running um, and I don't really have any advantage here it looks like maybe something but not really I think this is just a draw um, here it should be mate but how you know he played king h7 actually that was forced so we play d6 cutting him off actually I've got queen e5 I mean that's pretty nasty queen e5 or d6 first with ideas of queen e5. It's gotta be strong. All right, now we have a couple ways of dealing with this. Bishop takes e4, but then bishop e5. It should be good for me. Okay, um, I guess they offered me a draw. I'm a tiny bit better, but I don't have a good track record against him. Is he dropping a piece or something? I mean, like, I don't know. Let's try a couple more moves. What happened? Rook there. Um, what is going on? Rook f2. Rook takes pawn. f3. Ooh. What is going on here? All right. Sorry to scare you guys. Knight g4. Man, I'm like, what's going on here? Whoa. Whoa. f3, winning a piece. I'm, I'm thinking like my queen is somewhere relevant. Um, but not really. b5's hanging. I'm running out of time. Knight takes pawn. The proverbial shot. He's got knight takes b5 in between move. And then bishop b8. I don't know. All right. Here we're up a piece. It's, it's getting kind of monotonous. All right. We got a lot of pawns. One pawn up. Not so easy to win, actually. All right. Bishop from hell. He's unpinning himself, being very irritating. We'll try to confuse the issue. Um, yeah, I thought I had f3 here. Now, maybe I miscalc something. Most likely I did. But it's not so easy. Okay. Um, 
We'll see. I think that's a draw. Now here I have queen e5. Queen e5 is a good place to start. Getting him off the f-file. And now we have bishop takes h7 check, or bishop takes e5. The plan was bishop takes e5. And we can win a pawn a multiple ways, a multiple ways against Viagra. Oh no, we have f2. f2 is devastating. Oh no, f2. It's not devastating. So, all I've got is a pawn up here. Shit. I thought I was like winning, but he's got king d1. I mean, I am a pawn up, but that's probably not enough to win. That sucks. All right, I thought I was like just winning on the spot. We have some tiny advantage there. He's got king f1. Okay, fine. We're better. Probably close to winning there. This is a win based on structure, but my guy's hanging. Actually, it's not so easy. Um, okay. That's going to be complicated. Here, I was kind of hoping that I could mix it up a little, create some favorable complications for me. This is a draw. I might have been winning somehow, but I probably missed the boat. Ooh, the king position. We ought to have something here, but I don't see it. We've got this. And then we just take the bishop, I guess. It's sort of unbelievable that there's no mate here. I think something's biting my leg. All right. Well, drawish looking endgame. We have rook c2. Oh man. I mean, I could probably force a king upon endgame. That's like a win there. Queen h5, knight g6. All right. So. Oh, he wants. Silly turtle. 1300. Damn, he's a damn good 1300, man. Um, like, what am I going to do? He's got this move. Trading queens. What am I thinking here? Um, all right, I don't know. Like, whatever. So grab this. And he's got rook there too. Man. All right, dude, whatever. I mean, this is a draw. Resign. <laughs> this is stupid. I mean, every time I play I yes day, it's it's like I mess it up. Um This is a draw. This is not a draw. How many have I lost so far? One, right? the new guy we lost to a new guy from turkey yogurt played strangely in the opening but he brutalized me after that um this end game okay i'm not sure about that let's see what what else could i do i don't really like this end game i like my structure but on the other hand um he's got this past pawns on the queen side All right, now here I was thinking king and pawn in game. What, how do you like king and pawn in games? That's the real question. Rook takes d2. Um, all right, this is, obviously my king side is a little bit weak, but at least maybe my bishop can play. Should I do this? Now, how is there not a mate here? I think I had it last move. It would have been more accurate to go for queen h6, the previous move. Okay. 
This is sort of a standard ending. Um, let's play queen e3, stay on his a pawn. I don't think there's a mate, but there sure is a winning king and pawn in game. Um, you know, when you're like low on time, it's generally good to trade down, you know, into king and pawn in game up a pawn or two, just to make sure accidents don't happen. Um, let's keep an eye on that. Actually, knight b5 is going to harass me again. And my king needs to get get in the game here, get with the program. Okay, um, I don't see my king going up now, so that's a theoretical draw. Rook, 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 rook on the seventh. Try to get a rook on the seventh. We should be winning. Kotar has some counterplay, hopefully not enough. Uh, our bishop is in the game for a change. Our king side isn't that weak. How many do we have left? Only six, seven. Seven, winning against king nine, four, pawn up against Viagra. Winning against Bob, equal against. We're we're trying for something against uh, somebody there. Tomorrow I'm gonna be back, guys. Gotta be kidding! It's still not mate. Okay, it's mate. Rook okay. d seven is looking good. That's c seven for those of you who are alphabetically inclined. Um, your other d7. You want to trade knights. Well, I guess, you know, I can afford to trade one set of knights. Right, so this is king. King and pawn endgame land. I mean, we, we could probably try to find some way to mate him, but it doesn't look, doesn't look overly obvious. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty tough. Silly turtle. Silly turtle with a dynamic ending where he's got this queen side. That's kind of irritating. Okay. Now what? Um, here I like my chances. But I've got to be honest, like my track record in these kind of heavy piece, piece endings... It's not all that great. Um, a lot of games I haven't been able to convert. Here his king's kind of open too. So I would, I would kind of lean toward that being a good, a good thing. But man, it's just, you know, that sort of end game just not easy, not easy to do. All right, now this one I like, our chances. We've got a pawn up, slightly better king. Okay, speaking of kings, I was going to play a5 first. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay, this is like any move wins. Um, king position. Yeah, we're thinking king position. You know, do I really want to do f4? Maybe, maybe not. Um, oh, we're up the exchange and it counts here. Ooh, bishop takes d6 is slicing and dicing. Almost didn't even see that. You know, I just don't expect to have lose that win in like one move. You know, I, I'm used to life being not that kind to me. Um, I'm used to doing things the hard way. So when I can just like win a pawn or something, it's, it's usually something I overlook because life is not usually that easy. The tedious end game. How are we going to do this? Well, I mean, it's a draw, but let's play a few more moves while we're here. You know what I mean? I mean, we're not going anywhere, so we might as well torture Timmy for a little while. Um, it's a nice change of pace from getting dragged around, as I was in the opening. Okay. This end game is a draw, but we have some chance. I, I don't think I even realized that the guy was trading queens there. Outside pawn. 
this is a highly instructive end game. I know, guys. I'll try to keep the, the comments to a minimum. Um, Twitch Internet Chess. Happy to get a draw on the event. It's 1 a.m., 1.30 a.m. Uh, I was trying to get my get my rook in the in the back there and do some damage here. Bishop, active bishop. That's the secret idea, right? Okay. Got a little tiny edge against the Yeste, but he's very tough. Um, all right, now. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on the weak squares there. I mean, this is obviously bordering on pointless, um, but as I said, just just while we're waiting for the other games to finish. I guess the... Now what, G5 looks kind of interesting. Well, what are we gonna do? Guys, we're going to be back tomorrow with Blitz and Classical Chess. He's not losing. This position is an awkward an awkward end game where I was better, like hugely better, but now I'm I'm actually in some danger in a way. Although I think objectively it's a draw. Um D4 is funny. He just ignores it if I play D4. Whatever. Okay. Let's not waste too much time. Obvious moves. This rook in game gives us good winning chances. But there are no guarantees. Mm. How can I improve my chances here? Maybe H4? This is just impossible to win. I'm going to give up in a minute. This is not impossible. In fact, like rook c1, maybe this. I'll play h5. Okay, we both have... Well, that's a good move. I'm not really happy about that move. Silly turtle. He's 1,300? Really? Really? 1300 dude didn't I say this last week like are you really 1300 like how are you 1300 I feel like I said this already last week you know in a very similar game is it is it my imagination he seems like almost too good to be 1300 um, I mean, 1300 on lead chess, dude, that's like lower than a USCF 1300. That's like 1100. Um, it's a really low rating to hold me to a draw. But it happens, I guess. Not too often. Okay, I'm just going to offer a draw. I, I'm bored with myself. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go through this anymore, okay, dude? This is like pointless. Um... F6? King F6? That wasn't really the plan. Take, take, F6. I don't want to give him the D4 square for his king. Oh, man. I don't know. We're just not going to beat Ayesta. This is an interesting move, G4. All right, let's go for it. The craziness with h5. I forgot that Pirayu is actually a 2200. I mean, I've been playing this like I was playing an amateur, but I mean, 2200 is pretty strong. You ever play King of the Hill? No, I never tried it. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow with Blitz and Classical, 4 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. All right, I think the dude declined my draw. I'm not sure he realized. You know, I did offer a draw here. You are down a pawn in a rook and pawn in game. 
Maybe we won't offer any more draws. We'll just continue torturing Timmy for like 100 moves. And like Oliga style. If he doesn't want to draw, c'est la vie. We'll play 100 moves. How about that, dude? I'll move my rook to every different square. Wow. Silly Turtle just played that? Okay, that could change history. Um, and what is going on around here? That's dangerous. It's still probably a draw, but I mean, you're a like asking for trouble by playing that move, I think. That's seriously asking for trouble. Okay. Whew. Tedious world here. Bishop. Bishop to F1. This is sharp, getting kind of sharp. Um, centralize the old king. That was a good move by Mr. Viagra with one minute left because I was about to play rook f3 and like wreck his world. Um, so pretty, pretty good timing on the on the move there. Although I, th I think he's in trouble in any case. All right, knight d4 was now played. I have no idea what's going on here. I'm up a pawn, but he's got two connectors. Now he goes to the seventh on me. Um, let's see. Wow, look at that bishop on a2. He's counting on that. He's counting on that piece. Making a break for freedom. Maybe I should play where? Just centralize my king. Damn. All right, I don't know, guys. Where to go here, honestly. P5. All right, Mr. Viagra. I've got to defend my pawn. Damn it. Um, A4, I guess. Okay, what is going on here? Somebody please tell me what the hell is going on. I'm up a pawn. I have a pass pawn set up on the way to. The pawn goes to b6, I go to b7. I guess we'll just go back here. All right. b6. Is there any way white can lose this position? It's pretty hard to do, even so. Um, yes, that's the move I did expect, but the e4 pawn is hanging with check now. So we've got something. c5. What's up? Rook e3. I'm gonna hunt this guy down. And um, he can't free himself with c4. What's going on here? I mean, I can do rook b4. Rook g4, king a3, that doesn't really help. We need to get active with the king. a5 was played. I have to be able to stop a7. 
So it should be eight, I guess. Kind of scary. Some scary end games, huh? We're looking good there. Timmy is in danger of losing this. But it's not over yet. Yeah, this is the move I expected. But I can play pawn takes pawn. Bishop d3 fails. Knight a6 fails. So this is forced. Um, rook on the 7th. What is my plan there? I don't know. He resigned. Okay, Timmy resigned. I'm not really sure why. Um, I don't think resigning was necessary. And then this game is going to be kind of scary. Um, here we are with knight d4. Right, but that drops. Maybe I should just play bishop takes d4. Maybe not a bad idea. <laughs> it's a good place to start. And then we start hunting some pawns here. I hope that I'm not screwing this up. Should I be playing for mate somehow? It almost looks like that. F4. Sir Viagra is so short of time. Playing for mate? Like f4, king h3, king g4, h5 check. And where's the mate? Still like no mate. Um, I mean, rook f4 is really weak. That would be like last resort. Rook e6, rook e7. Okay, this looks really good. He's paralyzed. We're down to our last couple games. I just got a lot, like a message. Um, I seem to enjoy and savor endgames. Like when you're a master, I mean above 20, 2350, 2400 feet A, um, and I've been as high as 2460 something. I mean, you play people who like, you know, it's it's like pulling teeth to be like a pawn up, you know, so anybody, who, most anybody, I got a message. Um, most anybody who is a strong player really tends to savor endgames. I mean, maybe not everyone, but. It's just the stronger you are, the harder it gets to get winning positions at all. So, um, you know, when you're a beginner, you don't get a lot of end games that are close. Okay, this this position is is a bit annoying. Uh, maybe I could play h5. I wonder. Actually, g4 is not possible. Um, we ought to be winning this based on three isolanis and a good structure for white. I mean, I was just temporarily sacking a pawn. I, I thought I was going to get it back easily. I think there's a way to do it, though. Um, let's see. This guy is... I need my king, it looks like. All right. Okay, we can play for mate, or we can try something else. Rook a7. I think rook a7 ought to work one way or another. Um, maybe rook a4 here. What's the real idea, though? Yeah, now I was thinking rook somewhere, huh? 
um, rook b7. The problem is he can go on the seventh and mess with me, you know, like here, rook a2, with ideas of rook. Rook a2, rook b6. Start like messing with me laterally. <clears throat> so it's it's kind of to my benefit. Maybe rook f3. Alright, he's in time pressure. I'm threatening something. I don't know what, actually. This this move probably sucks. I'm certainly not worse. Uh let's see. Okay. Okie dokie. Uh, I think I've played this position before against Ayeste. I think we had the same game once. Um, now here we want to slowly improve the position. It's just like, looks pretty easy to do. What's he going to do? Well, Ayeste played knight a2. And now knight b4. It's like paralysis, no? Um... Okay, maybe I can't make progress. That forks his pieces though, what's he gonna do? Slowly improving the position. F6. I was thinking rook a4 and um, rook a2. Not that easy to win, but I'm, I'm feeling like there's definitely a way to win it. This looks like his V pawn is falling it's the, I fall in and I can't get up. Um, how is he going to protect that B-pawn? He has a way to do it if I do it that way. So, I actually, maybe I need to play bishop a6 here. And that doesn't work either. Oh no. He has bishop d1. Bishop c6. Yeah, this ought to be winning for me. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> okay, I can force a repetition of position. Actually, not what I want to do, though. Um, rook a6 is interesting. But, no, I don't want to draw Mr. Viagra. I mean, you're clearly on the, on the verge of losing here. Um, it's just like, millimeters from from loss it's probably lost for black if I play perfectly and you have like no time um, let's try to improve the king <clears throat> so here I was thinking yeah rook rook a2 rook a3 is interesting um, but rook a2 kind of paralyzes him so here, what happened? H4. Okay, that doesn't really change things. Take, take, bishop e8, and I think I win. That should be winning. <clears throat> I mean, he has these pawns locked on white squares, which is really bad. Okay, he freed himself now with e5. <clears throat> we should have mating threats. I can always go back to the 7th, too. Rook f7, forcing rook g8. But I also have g4. g4 looks kind of devastating. Um, should we go with it? Or should I play rook f7 first? Maybe I go this first. It can't hurt, right? All right, now we've got him really frozen with rook c2. And I was thinking about a transfer with the king over to c5. He can't play anything except for h4. But that's not exactly a walk in the park either. This looks very unpleasant for white. Um, G4. And 
right? I'm walking back here. And we've got this idea of coming up. You know, we could play e5 at some point and come up here to c5. I had a plan, but I forgot what it was. Okay, if g4, if h4, I'm going to take and cut his king off from the board. According to the position, according to the engine, our position was equal against Soltigo. Yeah, knight d7 um, wasn't a great move by me. I was just annoyed with that knight on e5. Okay, he played h3. So e5, anyway. Um, I mean, I might just be winning with e5, d4, just simply a pass pawn here. Play g4. Now, unfortunately, um, I have to play king g2. Isn't optimal, but that's okay, because I think we're still winning. Yeah, now I have to play king c3. This is... It's an important move, not to allow king b2. Ayesta is going down. I was fortunate though. I mean, I had this like minuscule advantage that should have been a draw. Um, two games, three games left. I want to win them all. And they're all close. I think we lost one game today. Now his pawns, you know, his king is getting mated in some lines too. I mean, my, my idea was rook f5. That's pretty evil. Rook f5. Like, okay, now he goes rook a4. That's an excellent move. Maybe I have to play f3. King g3. Actually, I mean, is king g3 good enough? It's problematic. I probably have to play f3. Mr. Viagra. He offered me a draw earlier, too. King g3, rook check, f3, e4. h5, check. But I mean, if he trades rooks, I don't think I'm winning. There's like craziness with f3, e4, f4. Which could be interesting. I mean, maybe that's the only way to go here. Yeah, we've got to lock the pawn. Well, I could just take this pawn. <laughs> Better to just take it. Um, okay, so rook d3. We play king c5. I think this is over. I mean, he's just playing without a king. Yeah, and I guess they just lost all his pawns. So the only, the only game that's interesting is Mr. Viagra. Okay, I missed this. Shit. I thought he was paralyzed, but he's not. Completely, anyway. Alright, I mean, I'm still probably winning. He is paralyzed. I probably missed this because it just wasn't really a serious candidate move. Um, Mr. Viagra played the rook check, which looks wrong. I think he made a mistake there, unless he has a mate I don't know about. I think he's getting mated first. And now rook f5 is one possibility. But that does look kind of nasty. Rook f5 with all sorts of nastiness. There's also h5 check can't really sneeze at that either. But the idea of king h4. h5 check, king h6, king h4, but then he has, what? Looks pretty bad for black. Um, 
there's a stupid threat of e4. Maybe I could just play rook e7 here. Just lock it down completely. Um, no counterplay. <clears throat> the other play I may have left. Survivor has a bad internet. Probably on a mobile device or something. What happened? I asked to resign. So we've got... This is like a very safe move. I don't think his A-pawn is going anywhere. I mean, if I get this E-pawn... That's that's it, man. Okay, he, he's sort of desperate. H5 check. If that gets him off my F-pawn, I just eat the eat the E-pawn. and. I mean, we're obviously winning with 3 against 1 on the king side. So... He's running out, you know, I think he's just like desperate. He missed a better chance though. I mean, he could have played e4 before and it was unclear. I mean, I might have had to play f4 and go totally vabank. Rook f5 looks winning, what's the problem? Well, I mean, the problem is that there's more than one candidate move. This is also very strong. I think he's talking about a different position. Um, our other game is is winning as well. So guys, I think we're going to finish with just one loss and a whole bunch of draws. 25. Did we play 25? I don't think we had 25 today. We had slightly less. Um, should I check him first? Probably. Check him back. It's not good to play G6 here. Maybe he'll cooperate. At least I don't think it's good. Could he play G6? Seriously? I did not take this move seriously, G6. I thought it would be bad for black. Well, objectively, uh, king h4, yeah, I mean, it's, okay. He certainly gave it the college try. Guys, thanks for joining me. Please don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I also upload these streams to the YouTube channel. You can watch the reviews either, either from Twitch or from, from YouTube. Again, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Thank you for the uh, likes and subscriptions to the YouTube channel. Also, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel now. And um, please feel free to donate, support the stream, support my YouTube channel via PayPal. I am available for lessons and training privately. Pretty busy at the moment, but we usually have openings for one or two people coming up every every month or so. So if somebody's interested, really serious about getting better, um, my primary job is is of a is as a as a full time individual coach. Okay, G five check. There's no mate, but you know we're just like probably better off not doing that. I'm um, just taking pawns here. Nothing fancy. We're going to take, take, and take, and have three pawns against one. I might have missed something better. It's entirely possible. I'm a little bit tired myself, but this looks pretty straightforward. Two connected pass pawns is winning. Um, our other opponent has not moved in a long time. He's got 10 minutes. Oh, he resigned. Okay, why was that... That board was still up, but he just resigned, I guess. Um, okay, king h7. So, I don't understand why um, why Timmy resigned in the rook end game where it might still have been a draw. We had a couple of premature resignations today. So, of the two connected pass pawns, the rook pawn is the hardest one to win, but it's actually pretty easy. There is no such thing as a hard to connect the pass pawns. 
rook end game really I mean there are some obscure obscure positions that are that are draws maybe because of the strange position of the rooks and king but for the most part 99% of the time anytime you have rook and two connected past pawns against rook it is a win and this is no exception um, I think I had a rook check in and take the pawn well that's kind of what happened um, but what I was you know interested in is earlier he could have played better and, and played e4 earlier and uh, maybe even forced me to play like f4 at some point which would have been crazy he would have like two pass pawns I'd have three uh, against one some checks against my king it would have been weird anyway um, this looks easy so guys I don't know how many we played today I think it was less than 25 sorry for the late start normally I'm streaming the simul here at 5 p.m. Eastern time we are off to a late start due to technical issues um, I think I just making my life difficult unnecessarily uh, let's see here not the greatest technique by me but it will suffice Mr. Viagra got a lot of time back he was down to almost nothing the men in the Timmy game two pawns and rook versus rook should win yet oh in the Timmy game you should check and then take the pawn keeping both pawns yeah, but I mean, okay, the guy just disintegrated in a totally drawn position. I mean, he didn't have to play b4. It, w it was just a draw. Um, I'm, I'm not going to really count that as a win. He was much better in the opening. I mean, he played the opening like like a very strong player and then just kind of melted down in the endgame stage. Even that, he didn't melt down to the very end. So that opening was the... That was the Goodman line in the King's Indian. I played with c6 and and d5, which isn't that great for black. <laughs> it's just like something different to throw out there. But the one time I faced it, I I'm, I just lost like a, a baby. Um, okay, rook check, king a3, check and mate. So I can actually force him to the seventh here. But if I do that, then he's going to have a series of checks. Anyway, I'm making progress. So I keep our rook a little bit close, close at hand. For I keep the rook close at hand for building a bridge. You've got to be careful. There are there may be some stalemate possibilities, particularly with a rook pawn. But the Timmy game, yeah, that was silly. I guess he was just bored. I offered him a draw, and he, like, didn't see it, I guess, or declined. <laughs> I was, like, joking about it, but... Um, all right, now we have to be careful. I'm really making this a little difficult for myself. Okay, if I go like king h7, king g6, check, king h7, does that seem, it seems, it seems reasonable actually. Um, there are many ways to skin a cat here. His king is kind of out of position now. Rook check, king h7, rook g4, rook g7. I mean, that's going to be winning for me eventually. I, I think my technique sucks. Um, I can also go back to h4. So let's try this. Mr. Viagra is not one to give up. But I mean, if I play like rook g, rook b4, rook g7, and then h6, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty ugly. 
It's not clear if our king is in a bad position or a good position. I mean, the king is actually going to promote. He can't really do anything about it. There's no stalemates with this king on f8. I'm playing rook g7, followed by h6 and g5. And that's all she wrote. <clears throat> His king is actually cut off from stopping these pawns. So I suppose he can just move his rook back and forth till my pawns get down to the sixth rank. And then I, I just move the rook across laterally and promote the G pawn. This is not really the standard winning method, but it's, it's good enough. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. We'll be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Blitz in classical chess. You can play me anything between like 5 plus 3 and 8 plus 3 time control. We did lose one game today. And there are a bunch of solid draws. But we were missing some of our regulars because they were expecting me to start at, at uh, 5 p.m. And we had some, some issues. So No stalemates today, man. Not with this setup. Just three draws. He's got bad, bad internet. I was looking at his lag. It was pretty bad earlier. Um, now he's better. Okay, he was red before. Final score, 18 wins and three draws and one loss. In my... In my defense, it sounds like a really good score, but um, we didn't have quite the amount of high-rated players we usually have. A lot of my regular guys, they gave up on me. Um, I don't know if Mr. Viagra is, is just going to like let the flag run out, or he's really trying to find a move here. I mean, it's... It's my obligation to play this out, you know. I, I don't I don't think that um he's in the wrong, you know, to not resign yet. I mean I'm a big believer in, in ethics and and good sportsmanship and nobody's perfect. I've been on sportsman like at times, but you know, I mean there is definitely a time to resign, but a sort of technical ending like this. I mean I played Grandmaster Alex Scherzer and, and he he did not resign in this position until like my pawn was getting to the getting to the eighth rank. So Alright man. Good game. Thank you for the struggles, guys. 18 wins, three draws, one loss. One of my best scores. But um, you know, to be fair, there weren't that many, you know, twenty two hundred plus players. So you guys hung in there as best you could. We'll be back with Blitz and Classical Chess tomorrow. Check out the YouTube channel. Please donate via PayPal to support the channel. Please, please subscribe to the channel here on Twitch, Slaggy, and um, also just check out my videos, video chess training on YouTube. We've got different stuff coming in there, and um, hopefully once a week I'll be able to upload a new video. Now that I'm settled here in the U.S., I'll be able to start making some videos once a week again, adding those to the YouTube channel as well as the, the uploads of the live streams that we do on Twitch. You guys are welcome. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you tomorrow for blitz and classical 4 p.m and um thanks to all my regular fans for joining me thanks to the new guys see you guys tomorrow bye bye